your data is important. It may seem like an obvious statement, but after all, whether we use Linux or any other operating system, why do we use computers in the first place? Computers do stuff for us, and when they do that, they produce some kind of data. Whether it's an email, a video, a recording, what, whatever, what have you. Therefore, that's the stuff we should be focused on backing up. Of course, backing up your system and things like that, that's important too. But you can always reinstall. You can't always get those photos back of your little girl when she was three months old. So your data is important. <laughs> Now, when you're backing up, there are several different strategies and several different stages, really. At least the way I think of it. I think of it as short-term, medium-term, and long-term backups. Today, I want to talk about the short-term. I want to talk about backing up what I did today in case I screw something up and I need it again tomorrow. Now, the way I do that is with uh, a sync utility in Linux called rsync. Okay, there are plenty of GUI utilities that claim to do the same thing. None of them are quite that satisfying. I mean, they work, but I've had a hard time getting them to do exactly what I want. You know, of course, they'll back up your... If you want to back up your home directory, they, they, that'll do it, right? They'll back up everything, but they tend to back up too much, and they don't have fine enough control over what they're doing so that you can separate the wheat from the chaff. I mean, there's plenty of unnecessary files in your home directory that you never need to back up. And some of them you might want to back up every once in a while, and some of them is really just temporary files and not necessary. So there has to be a way to make what I want, which is my data, my important data. I want my configuration files. I want my emails. I want my videos. I want my audios. All the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis that I would really be upset if I lost. Pictures, of course, anything, whatever, this, that, the other. Now, if I have them from what I did yesterday or today and then I somehow accidentally delete it I can get it back okay so I need a quick simple utility that will do the job and throw it to onto an external drive for me so that I know that I have it when I need it so let's go to the desktop and take a look I have three scripts that I'm going to use and they will be available on my GitLab page there's rsync home dry run rsync home no delete and rsync home in addition to those three scripts there's also an rsync ignore file you'll find all of these downloadable and available and we'll talk about them one by one let's get into it you're going to want to back up your um, personal data right essentially your home partition this would work for any partition, but your home partition I'm going to consider to be your main and most important one that you want to back up. All right, now I do use rsync uh, to back up the home partition. Why? Because it's simple, easy, and it works. And unfortunately, I've never found a uh, GUI utility that does the job right. Not the least, not the way I think so. It's very hard to get GUI utilities to correctly exclude certain directories. And that's important. I made a little script, which I have right here. And let's go through it to show you what it is that we need. Okay, it's an rsync script. And rsync is an extremely powerful script. If you look here, I've got the, uh, the man page up. And it is very extensive. It's one of the more extensive man pages you'll find. Okay, just tremendous amounts of options. It's very powerful. It's wonderful. So we're only going to be scratching the surface here today. But this is definitely enough to get you started, and it should work in just about every use case to back up for a user to back up his home directory. All right, so rsync is the command. You do not need to be root to do this because you're backing up your own files, which you have access to. If you were to use this for a system file or a system partition, then indeed you would have to run it as root or sudo but not for your home directory. So let's talk about uh, what we're doing here. Basically, we're going to take our source directory, which is going to be, in my case, my home, dot, home user directory, Tom, 
and we're going to sync it to somewhere else okay so this is the media time this is my external directory the typical kind of uh directory structure that an ubuntu derivative gives you in the media file you could do whatever you like okay i didn't make a variable out of this because that would be silly because everybody's directory structure is going to be different but it's probably going to start media but it doesn't have to you can put it anywhere i just i recommend strongly that you put it on an external usb an external drive you're you know hedging against disaster disaster could be physical disaster so if you keep it on the same computer and your computer burns up in a fire or is lost or is at the bottom of a lake then what good did your backup do you right especially this this is your data right so this is important now we have some options okay a is for archive okay this is sort of like a catch-all it has a lot of uh, very nice very important options inside including preserving permissions and it's and I put here that it includes the links option which is copy sim links as sim links that's important you don't want to copy sim links as files because then you'll probably be copying files that you don't need to be copied the next option is v verbose that just gives you information about what the program is doing as it's running basically it says I'm copying this file now and it, as it scrolls up the screen all right x now this one is kind of much more important you want to always have this x done unless you really know what you're doing that tells rsync to stay in its in one file system okay don't cross file system boundaries now what does that mean well let's say if you had a, another partition mounted in your home partition which is something very common it happens all the time well you don't necessarily want to back that up okay like i say unless you know for sure what you're doing you don't want to right you might be doing a 300 megabyte or two gigabyte home partition you think and yet there is a link on there to a two terabyte you know data partition well it wasn't your intention to back that up but if you don't have that you very well might be so this is kind of an important one okay all right now this capital p option this implies partial and progress these are just two things to uh, help the process along when you're watching it um, progress is going to just give you basically a progress of the transfer so partial eh, for a desktop user is probably not that critical but if it's for some reason power outage or whatever the uh, process is stopped in the middle then it's not going to delete a partial file so if the partial file happened to be a very big one then when you rerun the command it can start from where it left off not that important but it might save you a few minutes if it, you're uh, unlucky okay now this particular command is a dry run okay and that's the end option okay so that means it's going to perform it's going to execute the command without making any changes okay always do a dry run when you're doing rsync okay because you want to monitor the what your output and what you get because like i say these things are complicated and they it might not be doing what you expect and you can usually see that if you pay attention when you are ready to go you just take that end option out and it'll do it for real now the delete option which is over here this is up to you you have to think about this but i recommend it the delete option says that if the source if a file has been deleted in the source then it will go ahead and be deleted in the destination so that's not the default behavior you have to tell it with this flag with this option to do it okay and the reason why this is important is because uh i mean there's pluses and minuses if you do set it then your destination directory won't get humongous right let's say you're like me and you're making um videos and videos are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of megabytes and then usually when you're done and you finish editing it and you've posted it and you want to move on with your life you take those videos and you move them to some sort of external storage or you upload them to a server or whatever you're going to do with them. You're not probably not going to keep it in your home directory unless your home directory is very big. So if you happen to run um, this rsync command and catch that file, it'll transfer it over, of course. And if you don't have the delete flag, then even after you've moved it and deleted it from your home directory, it'll stay there. So your, direct, your destination directory will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want to use it as more of a backup and you don't want to lose things. 
fine, it's up to you. But that's what's going to happen, okay? Anything you delete in the home directory will not be reflected in the destination. Now we come to the exclude, which I was talking about before. The only, the, so the exclude option is excludes files or folders matching this pattern, okay? The exclude from equals, and you put a file, will get that data from a file instead of having to type it all out. This is A, more convenient, and B, more reliable. Okay, so I have a file called rsync ignore. I actually got this from a GitHub page, this fellow here, Ruben. Uh, it's got his information, which I've retained, of course. Uh, it's a very nice and a very thorough list of directories, basically, that you might not want to back up. And you can comment and uncomment these at will. Uh, GVM is certainly one that you don't need. There's many, many, many. Just take a look here. Why isn't this showing different colors? I don't know. All right. Uh, but any of these, like here's the entire cache directory is not being backed up. Uh, okay, there are a lot of options here that might not apply, but it doesn't matter. You can leave them in. It doesn't hurt anything. There's a couple that I put in. I think we've passed a few already. But okay, Mozilla is one. So I don't back up anything in my, any of my Mozilla profile. And then the... Chrome and Chromium are others. I don't back those up either. All right, etc., uh, etc. Et Whatever you want. Like I, I was telling you that I have uh, big videos. So let's say I keep those videos in my videos directory, and I don't want those. I can type. All right. So that would basically stop all video everything from the videos directory from being backed up. Now let's say that's a bit too broad and I have a subdirectory called vid projects. All right, so that would be a good one. All right, that's just a lot of data that I'm probably going to back up some other way. So that's an example of how you can add a path to this file and it will just go ahead and exclude it. All right, so I have made this rsync home which is this file right here it's basically this well okay let's talk sorry let's talk about the one we're doing rsync dry run which is this file right here with the dry run okay so it's a .sh file right it's a shell script and it is executable okay let's let's see here so if we look at our uh, rsync dry run right here you can see it's got the X flag. You have to do that. Now, if it isn't, how do you fix it? You do ch mod plus X for executable, and then the um, the file, and it becomes uh, executable. This already was, so I didn't need it, but there you go. So what you're going to do is you're going to back up. You're going to back up your home directory with one command, which is going to be r sync r sync dot home. Let's do the dry run. All right. You can see since that was in my path, I didn't have to change directories or do the uh, dot slash or anything like that. And this is your verbose output. Okay. It's showing you basically what it's backing up or since this is a dry run what it would back up if it were actually running okay and that was done all right so it tells you what it sent and uh, what it received in this case doesn't really mean anything because it was a dry run because on my destination directory i actually have a, a an older backup all right pop home tom okay so this or i didn't just do this now this already exists okay so what this information is telling you is how much it actually had to change so we're looking at about what's that about four gigs right four gigs out of the whatever it is 10 12 15 whatever and it gives you a speed up number which doesn't really count for a dry run that's why it says dry run but when you run it for real it'll tell you how much time you saved 
over if you would have had to copy over everything. All right, so that's my dry run. Everything looked pretty good. Now, if I run this for real, which is that command, uh, it will start backing up. Now, what's the difference between this and the dry run is that this is only going to copy changed files, deleted files, whatever it is. And you can see how extraordinarily fast that was, right? Uh, it was about, well, what is this in human? This is about, uh, that's about a gigabyte. That it sent about a gigabyte of data. And the speed up is eight times. So that means it was probably eight or nine gig gigabytes in the home directory, but it only had to back up one gig of it to finish the job because the rest of the files were unchanged. Therefore, you have a very efficient way to back up your directories. So that's the basics of rsync, at least as to how you can do it with your home directory. You'll find these files on my GitLab page, uh, all three uh, scripts, as well as the uh, ignore file. Feel, please feel free to download it and use it, modify it to your heart's content. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe below. And until next time. This is the Linux Experience XYZ, signing off.